Moving on to sheep and goats. So looking at the breeds, again, we have to think of uh, either seeing breeds as meat or as um, in goat, in terms of goat, typically it's meat or milk. Uh, typically in sheep, it's either uh, meat or wool, but sheep milk is also used and goat wool is also used. So we have to kind of um, think that there are three different things that we could use from these animals. Again, when you're looking at the breeds, the bigger muscled animals are going to be primarily used for meat. Uh, the sm uh, smaller muscled where the energy goes to more of making the milk, um, that's where you're going to see that. And of course, the hairier or woolier they are, the more likely they are to be used for wool products. Um, so we're going to start up here with goats. Uh, this is a very common goat that we see in Ohio. These are meat goats, and they're called boar, B-O-E-R, boar goats. Boar referring to the region where they were uh, first developed in uh, Africa. Uh, these are pygmy goats, so little tiny guys. These are little pygmy goats. They actually do really well um, as pets, but also for milking. Um, you have to use very small milkers in order to uh, milk these guys, typically actually human um, uh, maternity uh, devices uh, are used for these guys. Uh, the other faculty in our program, Natalie, she does have and breed um, these. They're actually Nigerian dwarf goats, not, not uh, pygmy goats. Um, she has Nigerian dwarf, which is kind of a pygmy goat, but little tiny guys. Um, this is a fainting goat. They, they are called my, myoclonic um, goats, and they, they, they're not actually fainting per se. Their muscles actually seize up. Um, they do grow out of this. This is a, a disorder that uh, they grow out of. Um, but this, these are called fainting goats, and typically they're bred for meat. Um, this goat is called a La Mancha goat, and this one is very easy to tell because they don't actually have ears. This is a dewlap here. This is not an ear. This is their little tiny ear here. So when you see a goat with a little tiny ear, that's a La Mancha, and nobody's done anything to that ear. It's how they're born. Uh, the goat with the really long ears. Uh, these are Nubian goats. They are typically used for milk. And, um, as opposed to meat, although they can be used for meat as well. But Nubian goats tend to be the friendliest um, of all the goats, tend to be real sweet goats. Um, and finally, this is also a goat. Um, it is a marine or an Angora goat. This a goat is used for its wool, so a little bit different. Um, and then I'm going to jump up here because this also looks like a goat, but this is a sheep. Um, this sheep is called a Jacob sheep. And uh, these sheep actually have four horns. So they're kind of funky looking sheep. They're also spotted. Uh, and the, the um, history of this is that uh, in biblical times, um, when Jacob uh, was looking to separate his herd after years of service to his father-in-law, was looking to separate his herd, um, the agreement was that Jacob could take any sheep with white in them. And you can see that these are all spotted sheep with white in them. So they're called Jacob sheep. Um, this is a Zeromni lamb. It's a little Romney lamb used for their wool. This is a Rambouillet uh, sheep, very muscular, mus muscular. So this is used more for meat. Uh, the, these are Cheviot um, Sheeps or Chevio sheeps uh, used for both meat and wool. And uh, these are Suffolk's, very commonly seen um, sheep when you see this black face and no top knot. That's a Suffolk sheep. Uh, this is a merino sheep used for wool. Uh, if you've heard of merino wool, very soft wool. And each of these wools are going to have like different different um, attributes to them. And so some are going to be softer, some are going to be more water repellent, and it's just going to depend on what you're looking for. So small ruminants, we lump these two together because they're very similar. There are a couple of differences we'll talk about briefly, but um, they're pretty similar. Um, in the way that we treat them for diseases, etc. They are ruminants, and so they do have four stomachs, just like the cow, um, just smaller, obviously. Um, the first thing we are concerned about when the babies are born is we want to make sure mom and baby um, recognize each other very quickly. So we want a really strong lamb you bond or lamb or kid um, 
doe bond. Um, sometimes sheep can kind of forget who their kids are. And so they, it, it's by smell. So they really need to be around each other and recognize e each other's smell uh, really well. First time moms are a little bit more prone uh, to not recognizing their offspring quite as well. Um, so we have to be careful with that. Um, lambs are born typically during kind of a cold time of year. So hypothermia is something we're concerned about. Make sure there's plenty of straw available, a heat lamp, but you want to make sure the heat lamp is safe and away from flammable items. Um, hypoglycemia, just like any other neo, neonate, they do need to nurse often and they need to, um, they need to have, um, uh, plenty of, um, not have diarrhea, so plenty of nutrition without the diarrhea. So sometimes we have to uh, bottle feed these guys if they're not getting what they need. Um, with uh, sheep and goats, they often have multiple offspring, so you want to make sure that each offspring is getting um, what they need. Mama trauma is not uncommon. Um, they're typically kept fairly confined uh, just so that uh, um, they get to know each other pretty well. So you do want to provide a little space for the lambs to get away from mom just in case mom's trying to get away from them or hurts them in some way. So we want to make sure that there's there's a safe place to go. Gastrointestines. So they also get Yoni's disease, which is a mycobacterium paratuberculosis. It is passed to them by deer. This deer is in a pasture that it should not be in. You can see that this fence is not um, for keeping deer in or keeping deer out. Obviously, it's not doing either. Um, so this deer can pass along this mycobacterium paratuberculosis to these uh, ruminants, uh, any ruminant. Um, uh, you will see diarrhea and wasting away. Um, obviously, not, not something we want to see in goats that are bred for uh, meat. Um, enterotoxemia, which is due to overeating, um, it's passed on by uh, where they because they overeat, then the clostridium that's in the environment um, overwhelms them, and it's uh, Clostridium perfringens type D. We do have a vaccine against this bacteria, and so uh, we do we can vaccinate them uh, for this, um, but we also want to keep them from overeating. Pasturella pneumonia. It's, uh, pasturella is a uh, pasturella multicida is a common bacteria that we see in a lot of um, cases. Uh, rabbits and and uh, rats and ruminants and um, we see it in dogs and cats as well. So they do get a pneumonia. Uh, we can vaccinate um, to keep them from getting this. Ovine progressive pneumonia um, causes uh, lung disease, but also abortions, and it's a reportable disease. Uh, so uh, we do have to be careful with that disease. Foot rot, very common in these guys. We want to make sure we keep them nice and trimmed and clean in their area so they don't get uh, uh, bacteria building up uh, underneath um, the, the hoof wall. Tetanus is another one they can get. Again, we do vaccinate them against tetanus. Uh, we try to avoid injury uh, to the animal. Anytime they get do get injured, we want to give them antibiotics and uh a tetanus toxoid or uh, antitoxin. Um, typically when we vaccinate small ruminants, we give them Clostridium C, D, and T. So type C, type D, and um, tetanus. Um, white muscle disease is a, a, a disease of the musculoskeletal system. It's also call, called nutritional myodegeneration or NMD. It's actually due to a lack of selenium, which is a micro mineral that they need and vitamin E. Um, we are pretty low uh, selenium in this area, so our, our pastures do not contain enough of it, so we need to supplement them with it. So how do we recognize it? Um, it's, it does cause heart disease. It will cause scarring of the heart. That's white muscle, but it also causes um, this throughout their musculature. So if you see them eating um, kneeling down quite frequently. They do sometimes eat that way, but if they're doing it more often than not, or if you have a lamb that is cannot stand upright, it's possible that they have a, a vitamin E. So we need to supplement that. Caseous lymphadenitis, more common in goats. This is a La Mancha goat, more common in goats than in sheep. Um, caseous means this cottage cheese-like substance of the lymph nodes or the pus, uh, pus in the lymph nodes, um, and it's a hard 
firm swelling of immune cells, white cells within the lymph node. So it's a, a reportable disease and those animals need to kept, be kept away from healthy animals. Um, copper toxicity, this happens in sheep. Um, sheep and goat uh, both need supplements for uh, mineral blocks, but you have to make sure that it is a sheep mineral block. It cannot contain copper. They are very, very sensitive to low doses of copper, and you have to be really careful uh, that you're not giving copper to your uh, sheep. If you have to uh, supplement your goats with copper, you just give them a, a bolus of copper. Um, they, they make those uh, little capsules and you can give that to them. Otherwise, you can provide it with a mineral block, but you want to do so if you have both sheep and goats together. You want to make sure that the mineral block does not contain copper. Pseudopregnancy. So whether when an animal, when a goat specifically breeds, they automatically, or sometimes even if they don't, they automatically think this time of year I'm pregnant because they typically breed once a year. Um, their body just goes into this pregnancy and it becomes a false pregnancy and it will look exactly like a pregnancy to the outside eye, except if you do an ultrasound, you'll see it's completely empty in the uterus. Um, the problem is that, you know, if you don't have access to an ultrasound, you'll think they'll gain weight, they, their, their mammary glands will enlarge, they will look like they're pregnant, um, but, and then at the time when they're supposed to give birth, um, they just release the, the fluids and they don't give birth to anything. And that's actually fairly common. Um, so you'll go five months thinking your, your um, uh, goat is pregnant and they're not actually pregnant. So uh, it's important to verify with an ultrasound. Um, so that's called a pseudo-pregnancy. Mastitis obviously is a, a major issue. Um, we need to make sure that they are able to milk and they're able to feed their young. It's a pretty gangrenous, nasty mastitis. This is pus coming out of the um, mammary gland. Um, anytime we have a mastitis in any animal, we want to milk that gland out. And you can imagine milking this gland out is going to be super painful. We want to milk that gland out, get as much of that milk out as possible, and then medicate whatever's left in there. We actually stick uh, medication right up the teat canal and then massage it around that. But we have to do that every day, and that can be pretty painful. There's another reportable disease called caprine arthritis encephalitis. It causes arthritis and encephalitis. Um, so we have to be really careful that we're not passing this along. If we see any swelling of the joints, etc., uh, we have to report that. Scrapie, another uh, reportable disease. This is a neurologic condition that causes the animal to feel like they're itching all over, and they will actually scrape all their wool off. Um, if you find, if they find scrapie on your property, you cannot have, you, can, you have to get rid of all of your herd and you can't have a new flock and, for a, like a year. And I've had a couple of farmers that I worked with in New Hampshire that actually had to get rid of their entire flock and, and completely clean everything and then have to wait and to repopulate uh, for over a year. Pregnancy toxemia, um, it's, um, common if you have a, a an animal that especially has more than one um, offspring and then you feed it a lot. Um, so it actually, uh, we don't increase calories in any animal until they're in the last third of their pregnancy and then we have to do it in a balanced way because if we overfeed them that actually is going to cause more problems, uh, cause abortion, uh, late term abortion. So eye and skin, they also get keratoconjunctivitis conjunctivitis or pink eye. So again, we want to be real careful when we're treating that, um, not to touch our eyes because we can get that, um, treat them uh, daily or put a patch and glue their, um, their eyes shut. Contagious eczema or sore mouth or ORF. Uh, this is um, in lambs and this is a zoonotic disease. We don't want to touch this lamb if they have little ulcers and stuff around their mouth, um, we can actually get that lesion as well. Uh, so we have to be very careful of that. And basically we need to keep them from overeating. Uh, we have to be very careful with that. Uh, if you have any questions about sheep and goats, um, I'm gonna stop right there and uh, let you add, formulate your questions and look through your, your paperwork to see if you have anything else.